for the first time in Iran's history, the Iranian president appeared before the parliament for questioning. The long list of questions included his management of the economy, employment, inflation, domestic policies, subsidy reform law, his relation with the country's leader, plus his recent appointment and removal of key officials. President Ahmadinejad told the parliament that lawmakers have the right to question the president within the framework of the law and the constitution. But he also argued that the parliament has used every legal channel to put pressure on the government and even question its performance in a range of fields, including the economy. Lawmaker Ali Motahari read out the questions in the open session of the parliament on Wednesday. The president denied the claims that he had ever challenged the leadership or that price hikes had anything to do with the slashing subsidies. He also said as president he can appoint and remove cabinet members, but it was his closing words that irritated some MPs. It was not a difficult quiz. To me, those who came up with the questions were among those who got their master's degree by simply pushing a button. If you had consulted us, we could have come up with better questions. However, I answered your questions with a sense of humor. So be fair and give a good grade, because any grade less than 20 is unfair. Some lawmakers denounced President Ahmadinejad's performance and attitude, saying he insulted the parliament instead of responding to the questions. They also told Press TV that this could set the stage for his impeachment. The president came but refrained from answering our questions in a rational and technical way, he used his own special language to answer our questions. He also insulted the parliament. The president came to the parliament thinking that this is a joke. He didn't use proper words and insulted the parliament. His attitude was unacceptable. But the questioning was right and hopefully the next move will be to impeach him. Other lawmakers, however, welcomed his presence at the parliament and said, despite his attitude, the questioning was a major success for both the parliament and the government. This never happened before. I have always told my colleagues not to make a big deal about the questioning. It was just a dialogue between the two official bodies. Some MPs had concerns about the government's decisions and policies, even though the president's answers were not convincing. Under the parliament's articles of association, the matter should be put to rest. We have no time for further arguments, because we have only two months left to go through the budget bill. After that, there will be a new parliament. At the end of the open session, Parliament Speaker Ali Lorijani said the President answered the questions within the framework of the law and the matter should be put to rest. He also agreed that the way the President gave his answers was not that right, but urged some of the fuming MPs to stop the argument and instead get ready to review and ratify the budget bill, which will begin in April. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday. March 14th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. On YouTube, it's ddarko2012, and my backup channel is ddarko2013. I recommend if you do have a ddarko uh, subscription, the ddarko2012, please get the 2013 uh, as well, because eventually I'm going to stop doing a 2012 in order to basically secure my account. All the work that I've done the past couple of years, it'll, it could be just wiped and lost. So I don't want to keep uploading videos to that account. So I'm hoping that longtime subscribers would move over to that 2013. Some have, and I appreciate that. Okay, U.S. President extends sanctions against Iran on Wednesday. U.S. President Barack Obama has signed an order to extend sanctions against Iran that were imposed in 1995 because of the actions of the policies of the government of Iran continue to pose an unusual, extraordinary threat to national security, foreign policy, and the economy of the United States. Basically, the corporation of the United States and the powers that be don't like this little sovereign nation uh, doing what they're doing, so they're a threat to them. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of scary, though, because... Uh, this national emergency, uh, he's extended it twice here in the United States. Um, so we've been in a state of emergency where martial law can be declared. So, you know, you got to take a look at all the stuff that's going on here. 
Um, but their goal is to starve the Iranian people. That's uh, that's their ticket. They do it in uh, different countries as well. Turkish Prime Minister, Israeli attacks on Gaza are a state of terror. So it made some heated statements in condemnation of the most recent Israeli airstrikes on the Gaza Strip in a speech Tuesday calling the attacks a massacre. So you never know what you're going to get from uh, Turkey, which way they're going to go. But it says here, Natiano, Iran behind recent Palestinian-Israeli violence. So he has some nice... Uh, propaganda here saying on Wednesday he was blaming Tehran for the most recent escalation between Israeli and Palestinian militias so uh, it says here Gaza is forward outpost for Iran so some people that think that uh, what was it, Hamas was created by Israel and then they just piddle those little rockets around against their big Iron Dome system right here that can shoot 85% of its rockets uh, out of the sky. So they're not really a threat, but they like to act as if they're always on the defense. Israel, that is, just like the United States, we're always on the defense while, while nothing's actually happened to them. Well, who starts it? You know what I'm saying? But either way, uh, nobody wants to look at that. So, But it just gives justification and legal precedence to go on the attack. Uh, despite what the truth may be, we have IDF, uh, Israeli Defense Force official, says army ready for ground operation in Gaza. So that's right. It says here. So yeah, we we I saw something else about some emails about Assad and Syria getting uh, advice from Iran. So now you're having this that Iran's behind, uh, you know, Syria crackdown. Iran's behind the Gaza rockets. It's just like it's all bullshit. You know what I mean? I just hope people would see the case that they're building is built off bullshit. It says the Israeli Defense Force is prepared for any development, including a situation where we are forced, either forced into a launching a ground operation. We have everything we need, I bet you do, and are ready to step it up if needed. So moving on, Prime Minister discusses expanding operations. This is all based off what? Rocket launching backed by Iranian group shows danger of what it might be if Tehran gets nuclear weapons, which they already have. So this has been going on for years. There's little skirmishes and that. But it doesn't really matter because it's all about timing, right? So we will strike at whoever intends to do us harm. And he goes on and talks about a crushing offensive crushing offensive capabilities, i.e. they're implying that they're on the, the, the defensive. So moving on. Israeli warships pass through Suez Canal, and they say it's part of a routine exercise. And uh, just remember that Sheik or Ayman, I'm trying to remember his name, uh, but he basically... Uh, lays out the whole plan uh, as far as the powers that be, the West and Israel, uh, expanding outwards. In other words, oh, we're being attacked, we're being attacked, and then they go on the attack, and they actually expand Israel, and Palestine goes down with you know within days probably uh, when they really want to take it. They'll take it from them. So an Iranian businessman was murdered in Georgia, another uh, place that I think the regime is uh, pro-West, maybe not the people, but uh, either way, uh, we have here that this individual was living in the country for 11 years and was engaged in assisting Iranian investors in starting businesses in Georgia. Well, he's not going to be doing anything. Unlike you saw that video in the beginning uh, with uh, the president of Iran uh, basically uh, getting questioned and answering kind of surly, uh, because probably because he lost the elections recently with his prime ministers. But his prime ministers are bickering and, and, and doing what they're going to do, and they've already... They already have a new administration, so they're just wasting time. They really are. And then you have Supreme Leader appoints new EC uh, members. And what is this? It's the Expediency Council, and it arbitrates and disputes between these two groups, these councils, which uh, vets legislation for adherence to Islam and the Constitution. Like I said, uh, with Ahmadinejad gone, it could be worse uh, as, f as far as them getting uh, confrontational. Iran, that is. It says here, U.S. Britain making very real progress in Afghanistan so after after going there in the name of catching bin Laden and catching al-Qaeda ne neither are even there uh, they're still going in there and drone bombing and killing um, you know tribal villages and, and people and stuff like that but uh, I guess you know it says here recent days have reminded us how difficult this mission really is says Cameron so I'm not really sure what the mission is anymore but soldier accused an Afghan attack had prior brain injury they said the 38 year old father of two had a brain injury so he'll probably get off it and um, he could just be burnt out it could be legitimate he's just burnt out and he's been recycled over there like all the other guys uh, in the name of war on terror then they can't take it anymore but uh, the Koran burning, uh, I don't think anything happened. I think they got dismissed charges. And then the, uh, the peeing on the corpses, I don't think anything happened to them. So...
But it says here, several drunk troops behind bloodbath laughed on shooting spree and burned corpses. This is according to Reuters uh, quote from an uh, uh, Afghan villager saying that they were all drunk and shooting all over the place. So the, you never, you may never even hear about that stuff. You may just hear about that one soldier who then will take the blame. But then, you know, like I said, he'll probably just be into a hospital. In highly unusual move, Marines asked to disarm before Leon Panetta's speech. And there's a reason for this. There's a story here, a suicide attack bid on U.S. Defense Secretary. Car burst into flames on runway and fears uh, Leon Panetta, the ex-former CIA director and now head of the Department of Defense plane, was the target. So, again, a lot of this happens where, the, oh, the CIA gets attacked by a lone Afghan gunman that was a trusted source. It's usually a false flag so that they can go on the defense and justify them being there. That's the mission, right? They got to keep the mission, uh, whatever that may be. So I guess they had went on lockdown after this had happened. It said, according to the report, the Marines were waiting to hear the speech by Panetta when they were abruptly told by the commanders to get up and leave their weapons, including M-16s and whatnot. So you'd think that they'd want to be armed to protect them from this lone Afghan that, uh, you know, it's car blazing but he says all i know was to get our weapons out said a sergeant and asked why he replied somebody got itchy that's all i got to say somebody got itchy we had to adjust so this came down last minute but look at what i saw here Ooh, a tower Ooh, a tower i bet these guys are getting pulsed a hardcore so it says here that it was highly unusual that the marines at combat zones are uh it's supposed to have weapons within the reach, so uh, I'm thinking, I'm wondering if that uh, Panetta and them, they were briefly like, these guys are getting pulsed big time, uh, you know, we can't even trust that they may not take out their aggression, like that one soldier may have just been, I don't want to be here anymore, and he just snapped, and he went out and killed what he thought was the reason for them being there, which is the Afghan people, so we got to kill the Afghan people so that we can go home, those damn Afghans, and then, I mean, I'm just saying that this is not may not be how he was thinking, but when you're being pulsed and you're having thoughts, microwaves and that, uh, a pulse at you, you think that those thoughts are your own. So there may be an individual Marine there to be like, I just want to go home. This is the douchebag that's responsible for me being here, Panetta, you know, and do something. So they probably just disarm them. They can't even trust their own guys. See, that's why they want to go to cyborgs and machines because you can't trust the human element, you know. But I was trying to find the article when I came across looking for news today, and it said something that he was he had a, he had actually a quote and he was heading to Kyrgyzstan. I thought that was interesting. Kyrgyzstan. So I looked and I found this. Defense chief sounds off or sounds out Kyrgyzstan on key base. So Panetta sounded out the government of Kyrgyzstan Tuesday over the future of an important air base that Central Asia's country president wants U.S. military to vacate, clear out when its lease expires in 2014. So he was going to help the uh, an air base in Central Asia. And don't forget this, U.S. considering anti-missile data transfer to Russia. So that's right. Uh, United States is seriously weighing the value of providing Russia with specified classified technical information on missile interceptors planned for the deployment in Europe. Uh, it says here, this is for Poland and Romania, and I think in Poland they didn't even want it. So I mean, basically these are all ex or post-Soviet bloc countries that the U.S. is trying to get a hold of. And then I found this article, Boeing wins contract for U.S. missile shield over Lockheed Martin. So it's all just a big business when it comes down to it. Towards a new Iron Curtain, U.S. NATO missile shield encircles Eurasia. Good article. Go check it out. Gives you the break about how uh, these missile shields, where they're uh, located and why between Russia and China and the West. Iranian intelligence agents detained in Azerbaijan. And this article is supposed to actually be with this one where the uh, Iranian businessman was killed. Then Iranian intelligence agents is detained in Azerbaijan. They were accused of espionage activity. Headlines and links will be posted. Check this out. Path to Iran lies through Syria and Lebanon. Gives you another breakdown. It talks about silent diplomacy. No matter how these states pursue their interests in the region, eventually they will be forced to abandon the, quote, silent diplomacy or soft power as to Syria and Iran and act together. Uh, talking about a strike, which uh, Natiano, Israel, has not ruled out. We remember this article, Israeli officials starve Iranians to stop nukes. Then UN's FAO warns unrest in Syria is threatening food supply. So food supplies are being threatened in Syria. That's right. They're going to try to starve the Syrian people too, turn their people against their government. CIA chief holds closed door meeting on Syria with Turkish prime minister. So as Leon Panetta, that former CIA director, goes to the Department of Defense, you have what? A guy from the Department of Defense goes to the CIA, and they're going with what? Turkey, which is where where the uh, new National uh, Syrian Council is based, outside the country. Three big news here. Three prominent members of main Syrian opposition group that I was just talking about have broken away, accusing the group of serving the interests of foreign countries. Says key staff from Al Jazeera's uh, Beirut. 
Bureau, sorry, have resigned, citing bias in the channel's stance on the conflict in Syria. So Al Jazeera, so it starved the Iranians, then eventually bring in a no-fly zone. They're starving Syria, and now the Syrian opposition is calling for what? Oh, a no-fly zone. Somalia gunman sees World Fo Food Program aid. Then U.S. terror drone kills 30 in Somalia. So foreigners aid the opposition. Then we have Yemenis urgently need food. So what happens? Drone kills 45 in Yemen, and they arm them. This is GGN. Thank you.